All right. First of all, thanks Jesse for organizing this like open um, dev room for games, which is really cool to have it here at the, at the Open Source Conference. All right. So. My name is Pedro, and um, I'm a researcher in human-computer interaction. I work at this place called the Hasse Platten Institute, which is in Potsdam, which is very close to Berlin in Germany. And so, like, you're probably wondering now, hey, like, there's a faker in the room because you're not a game developer. <laughs> and that's true. And the games that I'm going to show are, like, super, super lame. You just saw, like, I've made some Unity, and the Pong in Unity is just, like, really horrible. Um, but hopefully, you'll kind of agree by the end of the talk that maybe, like, the idea of using a more of kind of muscle-based force feedback is interesting for the future of games becoming really physical. And we just saw like really interesting example today with a tangible orb. And also I'm here because I made this toolkit which is called the Open EMS Stim um, with the help of other people that I'll talk about as well. And this is fully open source and open hardware. I just want to share that with you because that might inspire you. So first I need a brave volunteer that wants to play a very special Pong. Come here. So, okay, come here. Arm, right you are the blue player, so you should stand here. All right. And yeah, you can, we can do this arm. It's going to be fine. All right. All right, so what's going to happen is that electrical stimulation is going to try to pull your hand upwards <laughs> as you're playing Pong. And you guys, it's hard, hard for you to see, but um, we're going to use the, you're going to use the O and the L to move right. your paddle up and down. And I'm going to use these ones. Okay. So you can start yeah. playing. Okay. <laughs> All right, and I don't know if you're ready. Okay, so so when he loses a point, it's even harder to play because your hand like goes away from the screen. Oh. I'm gonna demonstrate that. So so that kind of stuff happens. And this is like a really lame game because I'm a really bad game programmer. But I'm gonna lose one again just so you guys can see it. <laughs> so you could do that for like. Tens of a seconds or something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop it. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you could do that like with different things, and 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 if you're a game designer, <laughs> if you're a game designer, you'll have interesting ideas of what to do with this. If you're just a researcher doing basic technology, you have no idea. All right, so there will be more demos along the way. So what is this all about? Um, disclaimer is that all these projects I'm going to show are research projects in HCI. They don't like, they're not, no products and nothing is built on this or sold to Apple or something like that that uses uh, muscle stimulation. But I think they offer an investigation of how these, these things could look in the future and could potentially make uh, interfaces more physical. So all the prototypes that you see here, they use these type of devices, which are medical compliant muscle stimulators that you might have uh, from your doctor to do rehabilitation on your muscles. So if you have like a de degenerative disease or even if you're just building up muscle tissue because you had broken leg and you had your leg in the cast or something, your, your doctor might give you something like this. Technology that is very old, comes from the 60s forward onwards from rehabilita rehabilitation medicine. Um, this is just a little example like me controlling one of each of my other fingers just via, via smartphone. <laughs> um, all right. So, what types of games this is enabled? The first thing we built with this um, was just a game that had four feedback with mobile, which seems like a contradiction if you think of arcade machines. So here I'm playing a game, and there's actually force feedback, but it's my own muscles that does the force feedback. And so the device is actually pretty small. It sits in the back of a smartphone. You already saw that. It can actuate like the the fingers. It can also actuate the wrist and whatnot. And if you think I'm playing a little game here, I'm trying to fly an airplane, and when the windmill comes, my airplane gets derailed. But that's involuntary. It just moves by itself. And now I have to fight that and put the airplane back into trajectory, right? So it's a very simple kind of uh, approach to having force feedback. Now, if you think about it, what is kind of interesting is that the device is really tiny. It just has no motors, no actuators. It's this little thing. Now it looks a little bit different. Um, because there is a way to create force feedback sensations. It's called an exoskeleton. Um, there's other ways as well, but this is the most portable one that you have, which is using motors, pulleys, big batteries, a lot of electricity, amps of power to be able to externally move your muscles. So what we're doing is in exactly doing the same thing, a little bit less power because we just use a nine volt battery and we just send these tiny impulses to your muscles and they do their job by themselves because you have all the hardware already. All right, so this essentially allows you to uh, do the force feedback in a semi-wearable or mobile form factor. Now the question is, where can this be also be useful? And 
the, the question becomes really obvious these days because VR is moving into how the real walking. So not that you're just with the headset sitting in front of the computer, you're starting to walk in physical spaces in VR. That's called real walking. And I think like VR is a re really interesting a step right now because what you see is like super believable. If you look up there, I put this HUD there, but if I hadn't put that thing there, this would be like a picture of, I don't know, probably like some forest in Germany. Um, but so graphics is really realistic, but the sensations you have are kind of boring in VR. Um, you walk around, you touch all these air spaces, and it's all like kind of haptic listless, right? So there's nothing there. Uh, maybe there should be a wall in there because the normal games have walls that we just saw. You can also paint them in GIMP. Maybe there should be a boxer there that, <laughs> that kind of punches you through. I mean, there should be like physical effects if you're seeing physical realities, right? Um, if the game is about ghosts, that's all fine if you touch nothing. But if the game has a wall, you should touch a wall. And if the game has a, a boxer, you should feel uh, the punches. So I'm going to tackle both. So first, let's tackle the boxing example. So this is Impacto. This is a project we did uh, a year ago or so in which Xi Jing, this is my colleague Xi Jing, he's actually feeling the punches from this virtual avatar boxer. We've demoed this at a maze. And the way he's actually feeling that is because we're trying to render this same sensation, right? The sensation of impact. And there's two things about that. If something touches me here, there's a tactile component, my skin, and there's a force that moves me backwards. So we render them separately. We have a little solenoid that taps your skin, right? Tac, tac, taps your skin. And we also have the muscle stimulation that pushes your arm backwards. If you combine both, you give an illusion to your brain that it was a f there was a tactile sensation here and a sufficient force that pushed you backwards. And your brain is going to interpret that as, well, this force was big enough to move me backwards. So he's feeling those forces in that game. Feels like a boxer hitting him. And he can also hit back and stuff like that. I'll show a little bit more about that later. So Impacto kind of does this in a sort of wearable form factor. And when we played this at a maze with people was really interesting because you know like they were like hardcore gamers so they were really like jumping around and going out of the tracking volume and things that we've never done <laughs> which was really cool I always just play it like this uh, but people were really engaging on, on a kind of physical level um, and the key for this is really the muscle stimulation as you saw in the previous one um, the solenoid that we actually use is something super tiny it's even smaller than all the ones here um, because if you wanted like something to push through and feel like a boxer, you would end up with a robotic arm that would hit you with, I don't know, 100 newtons, 1,000 newtons or something. It would probably break you as well. Uh, our solenoid, when we measured it, it's something like 200 grams. This is like tap, tap, it's nothing. Um, but because of the muscle stimulation, it tricks you. So we played around with different sensations. Um, you've seen the arms already. What's interesting that is actually can actually hit back as well. So if you put a little redirecting thing for the solenoid, a 3D printing le lever, you can kind of like feel like you hit the boxer as well. Um, we've created a little bit of a juggling football thing. That's kind of cool by putting the solenoid in the foot and the muscle stimulation on the leg. So when the ball hits you, your foot kind of goes downward. So it would feel all those impacts for the ball. All right, um, combinations you can hit back with your legs. I'm going to jump that one. It's like tie boxing. And this one is my favorite. Um, if you put the solenoid onto like a random prop, it could be this water bottle. The vibration is going to be, when it hits, it's going to be propagated through here. But we're going to put the muscle stimulation still in your arm so we can do, move your arm. And that creates things like baseball, right? So you feel like the, something hit the bat, but it's your arm that goes backwards. So it feels like psh, that ball, like kind of force. And this one's kind of fun. We played a, re a little bit around with the visuals as well. So um, that's just a dummy thing that you're just holding like a filer. Uh, but in reality, in, in the game, you could be holding a bat, ping pong paddle, <laughs> fencing sword, different kind of uh, props that represent physical realities. Um, the hardest one that we just, this is recent. We're going to publish this soon. And this is trying to investigate what if you could create walls, so like making games even more physical by creating obstacles, like heavy objects and walls. So this one asks the following question. What if there was a wall there and Xi Jing could like feel it somehow? So this is a longer experience. And what we're doing is using the muscle stimulation to try to pull you backwards to not enter like large objects, like electro walls, like this, this button here, as you push it, you feel the resistance and you're trying to like push a soft button through. 
There's like a cannon now that shoots like propellers at you or things like that. And so you also feel them like just an impacto. Your hands go backwards. And the most interesting one, I'm just going to skip a little bit through. This is actually a very large VR experiment. Um, you can be in this world for a while. So this I find kind of cool. Um, you actually, when you grab the cube, you, you try to push through because you don't know where your cube is, and the system stops you at the moment where you actually f face the cube. Also, it pu pulls you downwards to emulate the gravity, right? So to, to emulate the weight under the gravity that the cube would, would do. So you feel some resistance, which is kind of cool because when you throw it, it is easier actually to throw a cube because you just feel like, oh, now I don't have these forces, so I don't know what's happening. All right, so this is kind of the, the part that we do as research. And as I started to try to experiment and give this to my friends, to other researchers, I, I faced the obvious problem, is, which is all these things that I showed you were things that I engineered myself. And it's not like I can give it to you and say, like, oh, just activate this command and this pin, and this is going to work really well. Um, just as an example, the bracelet. It's actually not that complicated, but in the end of the day, it's pretty custom made. So there's a processor there, similar to an Arduino. There's Bluetooth. There's the muscle stimulator. Um, there's a way to control the muscle stimulator without hacking it. That's somehow what I find really important about what, about my contribution here. Is that I don't. You see, like this thing is not open wide, and I'm not like taking out a capacitor and putting another one that I don't really know what it is. So I try to just modulate the amplitude that comes from this one. So if, if this one is medical compliant, at least I'm kind of medical compliant as well. Or at least it's very safe for you to use it. Um, there's batteries. These things are not medical compliant. Um, they explode. Accelerometers in, in the case of the of Impacto, that was a solenoid. And obviously, there's always the electrodes. So now I was starting, like, how can I share this amongst others? And actually, Jesse was, uh, was a, a key person in this because I um, was invited by Gamelier and Jesse to, to, to give a workshop at the iGamer 2014. I didn't even have the kit back then. It was just they all built something like this with relays and potentiometers and whatnot. And, and it kind of gave me the idea, OK, I, like, I have to structure this somehow in an open source way so people can actually reuse it. And then the, the, the other side of the story is that I saw a lot of people online that kind of liked my work, and they were like trying to replicate or tinker with it. And they were kind of putting some things in the wrong way. And I was like, OK, maybe they can hurt themselves. Uh, let me start doing workshops or at least like publish everything in a way that they, it's fully available. They can understand at least my decisions. And there might be wrong decisions too, but at least my decisions. So that allowed it to, to create this thing that we call Open EMS STEM. Uh, the boards were designed by Max and Tim, made by me and Max and Tim. And then I remixed this into to the version that it is now. Max was, he, it was at the time at the University of Hanover. He's now at Munster. And his research is also super interesting. So if you have time um, and the slides are online, you can check his stuff. And then what I really did was I created this board for a competition at the UIST conference. We call it WIST conference. where. It, it's like a game jam kind of thing where students come together in teams and they build prototypes and then they demo at the conference. And so this was the hardware chosen for the last competition. Um, and that's why I kind of remixed and made it open source and so forth. So what does the hell does this board do and why is it connected to this thing? So I told you guys that this is a muscle stimulator. This just creates a, a signal that would activate muscle fibers when collect, connected to electrodes. And this thing is essentially just a way to computer control it. So it sits in the middle. Right now it's connected via, um, via this way, but could be connected via, just by a battery inside. It doesn't have to be over serial. So just a little 9 volt battery. And all this thing does is to modulate the signals. It has an Arduino inside, and has a Bluetooth, but it could have other things. And has an understanding of how to modulate these signals without potentially being dangerous to you. All right. Um, so that's that is what it does. It, c it controls the amplitude of the haptic input. Um, this is just a screenshot of, of the GitHub. You have all the like, kind of walk through on how to use it, how to build, and so forth. So who has used it so far? I mean, before there were people like at the Game Jam at uh, iGamer and so forth. But this particular version has been used by all the teams of this competition. And I just want to now stress out a few of the projects of really incredible stuff they built. Uh, let me say, all right, so this was one of my favorites. It didn't win, though. Um, this was rock, paper, scissors. There was a lead motion controller. So with one hand, you would select what you want to do, like I want the scissor. And the other hand is computer control. You just play against your other hand. You're like, this. And you're like, OK, I won. And like, oh, I lost. It was, and it was working pretty, pretty darn well. Um, it's hard to make the scissor gestures, so they just kind of approximated 
a gesture than they consider to be a scissor, like something like that. But the implementation was really great. Uh, the leap controller, the way they did it, was kind of even detecting a little bit before you actually finished your gesture. It was like three, two, one, and like at the 2.5, already had decided what to what to use again. Um, this was really cool. And this was, by the way, is a Hayes rifle. At, uh, he's our, he was our sponsor. He's at Google VR. They kind of sponsor the whole competition. And he's trying the project that actually won the competition, which is called a vibrato. So they were teaching people how to do this vibrato effect where you're like, ah, I don't know how to do it, with your voice by using muscle stimulation here. And Hayes was also trying it on, on his neck muscles. Um, and they made a karaoke machine that was essentially not just show you letters, but at some point automate the vibrato and like <laughs> to you. It was really good. Um, I think these guys also won an award. This was an air guitar. I, I call it the first real, real air guitar. So your muscles would essentially move automatically <laughs> to, to any beat that you would play on the smartphone. So they also created like a, a tracker for, for, for beat onsets and so forth. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Some HoloLens things, a lot of VR. Um, VR immersive experiences were also made. Um, this is an interesting one. It kind of makes you smile while in VR. <laughs> that, that's my advisor as well. And one of my favorites talking about alternative uh, game controllers and physical tangible orbs and things like that was a ping pong paddle that was just for a physical ping pong game to, to per person, but I could hold the smartphone with my other hand and send like evil kind of <laughs> things like shake, shake your hand now and you're like trying to play but your hand goes crazy. And you had a limited number of power-ups that you could use and things like that. So it was, it was a very interesting augmentation of ping pong. All right, so how to use it. Um, it accepts commands via Bluetooth, uh, 4.0, so that's the low energy. That's what most uh, smartphones have right now. Um, and also accepts serial, and there's an onboard Arduino that kind of does that part. So just to show you how the Bluetooth part works. All right, so oh, turn this one off. All right, so. We made it Bluetooth because it also simplifies people just trying it out for their first time because it's easier to like do it over a computer. So if you want, you can tap on one of those buttons. And <laughs> I'll probably feel something. Um, Channel one. Yeah. Yeah, so the longer you tap, the longer I feel. That was very short, yeah. So that's this one. And that's this one. So you can pass it along. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll kill it at some point, you know. Um, so that's interesting because <laughs> because in, in the workshops that we give, people can build games just out of even just that controller, which is like Wizard of Oz, kind of just experimenting. You don't even have to build a full game. It's just a game can be like a set of rules, and then if something happens, it does that. Uh, one team also built a board game, which I found really cool, um, that when you're just playing a, a normal board game, and, and at some point something happens, and your hand kind of goes left or right. Or something. <laughs> so that, that was cool. Um, and then, yeah, you can also do it over over USB, and we can try to do something kind of fun here. All right. We still have some minutes, so let me see if I can pull this off. Can you try to drink? <laughs> <drink? laughs> let me see if this is running. So let me kill this one. So it's so hard to double screen. So where are we? Wait, this one. All right. Oh, wait, I think I need my phone again. Who has my phone? Because <laughs> I think that's my hotspot. Oh, you guys lowered the amplitude. That's why I wasn't feeling it. Um, all right. Hotspot. Am I connected to the hotspot? Oh, I can't see that. Let's hope that I am. OK, yeah. <laughs> I am connected, but I didn't feel anything. Let's try that again. It's a little tricky on the big screen. Uh, mm. Wait, Fred. Oh, PowerPoint crashed. That's kind of fine. All right, so the board needs a little bit of time to set up the Bluetooth usually. So here you see one of the one of the interfaces, which is um, I made it small. It's not even an API, just a little interface for Node.js, so people can also like do this, do these things over the browser. And 
Oh yeah, I felt that one. Yeah, so when you load this page, it just like zaps me. So if you would, <laughs> if you would go to my IP address, which I would have on the slides, but we just lost the slides. Where are the slides? PowerPoint. Keep it running, so maybe it will work. Where are we? Maybe we should jump this one. Where are we? we already went a long way. That's nice. So here we are. So yeah, if you would go to this address, but you have to log into my phone's Wi-Fi, so that will take too long but I would feel your HTTP gets. <laughs> All right, so that sounds complicated. APIs, it's not really like I made APIs, but what I made was a bit of uh, like module for Python, um, like a very simple Node.js kind of library. Um, I also did a process thinking Unity 3D and time is up, so I'll just jump. This is just screenshots from the GitHub, so all these things are online. If you wanna make one, it's not super hard, there's also a tutorial online on how to bake your own board and make one. Um, we have only a very limited amount, but if you really need one, you can send me an email. I'll try to make one for you. And yeah, we make them like this <laughs> in an oven. So that's the end. Um, I hope you kind of enjoy this thing. If you want to learn more about this, you can always organize workshops, either with me or just by yourself, and I'll just help you online on how to set these things up. Organize game jams like the Gamedia has done. Um, and if you want to get involved, there's a lot of hardware that needs improvement in software, definitely, and mostly you should just make a lot of weird games. Um, yeah, that's it. I want to show one more thing, so I'll sacrifice question time. If you like weird games, I think this is, this is the one that you will like the most. This is a game without a screen. It's this children's game that you normally play with two people. You try to slap each other, but here Patrick is playing against the computer. So that hand <laughs> is the computer, and that's his hand. And this is really, really hard to win because you have no reaction time to kind of run away from the computer. So there's an interesting also game design challenge on how to design a game that has no screen and just works on your body and works on your muscles. Um, yeah, that's it. And you got it. Muscle. That's a great question. So you do. So there's a lot of things that require like knowledge of what you're what you're doing. Um, so you do need to have a sense of the anatomy, um, and the things in the arm are really easy, and then things in the rest of the body get really complex because muscles are very layered and, and things like that. So there's electrode placement charts for all these machines and all the muscles you want to actuate, and that's usually the the best way to. To, to do it. Um, and the question uh, for those at home was how do you know where the muscles are that you want to actuate? Where do you place the electrodes? Yeah? So uh, the EMS device is just output to the sine wave? Um, so question is, question is what is the EMS device outputting? So there's a lot of people that also build their own and just output simple sine waves or output square waves. The medical way to do it is to output a thing called a biphasic waveform that looks a little bit like a sine wave, but has a very long tail. It, definitely AC, it has to be, it goes up and down, but has a very long tail, which now I would take 10 minutes to explain, but it allows your muscles to do a certain process that they need with that inverse, inverse so the negative part of the wave. Um, so yeah, you can totally use like these do-it-yourself kind of things, but uh, like if you want to be on the safe side and have a really good experience, um, these medical devices that output that particular waveform. And your box is then modulating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how expensive is such an EMS uh, medical device? This thing costs 20 euros. 20 euros. Oh, how expensive is the, the EMS device? 20 euros, and to make a kit like this, the most expensive part is the Arduino. So it depends on how cheap your Arduinos are. <laughs> Might out of the ripoffs with the non FTDI driver, $4. <laughs> <laughs> but then the driver sucks. <laughs> how much can you miniaturize? Yeah. Question is, how much can you miniaturize? I think the answer is a lot, like really, really a lot. Um, this is, you know, self-engineer kind of not not an EE student kind of uh, kind of technology. Like this could be a computer chip that big. Amplifiers are always going to be a certain size. So this has 
high voltage amplifiers that do something like from your very small 5 volt signal to like 40 volt, 50 volt. And that will always have a certain size. It's a transformer. Um, but we're talking about, you know, something like this. It could be very small. It could be in a smartwatch. It could be in a bracelet form factor. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we're going to have to stop there. Thank you so much.